finally safely through and there is a look at the draw and how they're shaping up. They'll play the winners of Belgium or Portugal on Friday night in Munich. And as you can see earlier today, Denmark booking their place as well. They're up against the Netherlands or the Czech Republic next. Richie, look, we, we thought they were going to do it in normal time. They didn't. But eventually, champions get the job done, which is exactly what this team have done. They did. I think by their own admission, they didn't reach the levels tonight that we've seen them do in the group stages. And I think a lot of that is down to the effort and the work rate and the organisation and the heart of the Austrian team. Um, they must be feeling pretty low given the effort they put in. I think it's probably by a distance the best that Austria have played in this tournament. But Italy did enough, they had the quality to come from the bench um, and they just stuck to playing the way that they know will get them a result. So they deserved it in the end. Lisa, they've been taken to extra time in the European Championships more than any other team. This their eighth time. And just as Richie says, they, they know how to win. You can see how much it means to them as well. Yeah, they do. And I think, you know, they, they showed great character. They stuck to the processes. They fully believed in what they were going to do. They believed in the quality. You can see the camaraderie there and just what it means to them. And they'll celebrate, and rightly so. But I think... But you have to, and we touched on it, you know, the start of extra time is it's a really, really good team can play, play not to their best and just find a way to win. And that's what they did tonight. And that's really, really important if you're going to kick on and try and win a tournament. That's exactly what they did was they just hung in there and found a way to win. And now they're through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, deservedly so. All right, let's get into the analysis then on this one. There's plenty to look at here, Lisa. And the first goal as well. Two substitutes getting the goal. The first time you're going to take us through. Yeah, I actually think this was a brilliant goal. I think this is exactly what Italy needed to do. Great ball just pops inside. A fabulous ball through from Locatelli. Watch how he sucks in the Austrian players. A little switch of play out to Chiesa. And he, he, like he has a lot to do there when the ball comes to him. But if you watch here, the runs that they actually make, like you look here, Piscina's run inside takes Alaba with him and then it opens up the space on the opposite side. You can see it here. The channels just open up. He's completely isolated. Austria doing what they did best in the game. But also I think you have to give credit to Bellotti because Bellotti actually makes a run across into Reger, and that takes him in. And then Piscina's run takes Alaba in and that completely opens up the space. He's now on the edge of the six yard box when he takes the second touch and he strikes it sweetly on the half volley. Um, lovely little header down to himself. Two brilliant touches and that's a beautiful strike. And his nose is still intact after all that, <laughs> yeah. taking it on the noggin there. Uh, Damien, the second goal, also a substitute, Piscina, and they were really rocking at this stage. Yeah, the substitutions made a, a big impact, uh, Jackie. My big friend involved, and I would give him a bit of stick before the game. Weak link in the team, it's Herbie, number 15 here. Stayed up, obviously, from a set piece. Second, third phase. Ends up on the ground, but he still tote pokes it to Messina. Uh, he's a really cultured footballer. This is his eighth cap. Uh, today he's got four goals already Atalanta uh, attacking midfielder really good player but yeah you have to credit to Mancini uh, it was lacking something uh, they were sloppy scruffy throughout the game tonight and you'd have to say that the substitutions did change the game and brought it all you know important two goals I had to say as well Chiesa coming on he just brought that spark the very first thing he did when he came on was press the goalkeeper from 40-50 metres which generally in their whole performance night was lacking and you could see already right he's on it and he ended up delivering with a goal yeah what a great thing for team momentum as well two substitutes getting the goal I should say two more substitutes have scored now at Wembley at this tournament than starters three to two which will tell you a story of itself what about Austria then Richie they did get a goal of their own and they were really really trying to make a game of this they were and I think they they deserved the goal when it came it's really well taken the corner kick is well struck but um, Grigoric there, he's six foot seven, so you would assume obviously he has a threat in the air, but to be making contact with the ball, it's about a foot and a half off the ground, and to find the space, very little space to aim at, superbly taken, um, which gave us a very, very exciting final few moments, but um, it wasn't enough in the end, but superbly taken header. Feet of extraordinary athleticism, to be fair. It wasn't the only time they had the ball in the net. And the mad thing is, Italy's long run, and there was so much talk about the records, 1,177 minutes, and finally it had come to an end there. But Austria also had the offside goal. This was a huge moment, because this came in the 65th minute, so obviously in the second half. And it, like, Austria were coming into it, but this is... 
you're sitting there thinking like is this it is this the, the, the big shock so far in the tournament the, everyone came out of the group stages that we thought Italy were one of the hot favourites and we were all contemplating a couple of minutes here thinking well if this goes in and given the way that Italy had played at that point they were nowhere near the best they weren't as fluid as slick as free flowing you're thinking this could be something seismic here in the tournament but of course, it wasn't. Correctly yeah. ruled offside. Yeah, in fairness, look, it was. And look, sometimes you get the break, sometimes you don't. Italy, they weren't at their best tonight, though, Damien. You're going to show us some clips of this as well, but they just, they weren't amazing. No, they weren't. But listen, that's as we talked about at the end of full time, that's a sh sign of a top team. When you play really bad, can you win? And this game will give them more belief than possibly the three uh, group stage games where they, they won with ease, you would say. My only worry with them, and listen, we've given them rave reviews, and there's no doubt they're a top team, not with, you know, big name players, but they haven't had a real signature win yet. So what I mean by that, yes, of course, three great wins in the group. This is massive, but I was just intrigued. They're obviously 31 games now unbeaten, and I, before I came on air tonight, going through them, there's nobody, literally nobody of interest that they've beaten. Uh, no top 10 team in the world. Netherlands maybe, but they've struggled for the past couple of years. Um, I'm not even sure when they did beat the Netherlands whether the Netherlands were in the top 10. Otherwise, it's your Armenias, Bosnias, Greece. It's amazing. They have not come up against top flight uh, opposition in England, the France, the Germany, the Portugal, the Spain, Croatia. So, yes, of course, amazing. And at this level, to go on a run for that long is absolutely brilliant. It's what we all dream of. But... The real test is to come, uh, Belgium or Portugal, because I, I was blown away. They have not met anybody of quality on this amazing, amazing run. Yes, a top team, but we'll really stand back and go, well, if they go and do Belgium or Portugal. Well, that is the question. Can they? Based on what you're seeing, if they do that tonight, will they beat Belgium or Portugal? I wouldn't go off what I've seen tonight. Listen, yeah. there, no doubt, no team in the world goes on a run like that. Of course, they're a brilliant team, but... Yeah, if they go do uh, Belgium and Portugal, what they're more than capable of, that won't bother them tonight, the performance. The top boys, they move on, forgotten about, and they prepare. Mm. Lisa, you were nodding your head. you still think they're tournament frontrunners? I think they're definitely contenders. I think, and I think with Mancini, he's got an incredible record in cups. So you look back through his career from 2002 to 2014, he was in at least a cup semi-final every single one of those years. In his first year at Fiorentina, his first year at Lazio, they both clubs won the Coppa Italia. His first year at Man City, they won the FA Cup. He's got a knack of going on cup runs. It'll take seven games to win the Euros. He's, he's and gonna, I, I wouldn't, he's gonna I have just, to have a big one. I don't know, I just think he's streetwise, there's something about them and sometimes you just have to win ugly and you need a bit of luck as well. Um, I just, I still think they're, they could be there or thereabouts. They are on a tricky side, Richie. I mean, they still has, as Damien said, they've got to play some big teams. It's a horrible side. Um, and I know people in this situation always come out with something like, well, you have to beat the best team to win. And if we're here to win, we have to be confident of beating the best like blah 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 but it is a very difficult side I'm sure they'd like to be on the other side I think it's like it's a game by game basis now are they good enough to win it uh, of course they are but I think overcoming Belgium and Portugal now is going to be a huge huge task and I think over the four games obviously I don't think they'll be hugely impressed with how they played tonight but they won it and they were very good in the other three so they're in a great position but look at it there France, Spain on that side of the draw as well I mean if you're Denmark tonight and you're sitting looking at your side of the draw versus what Italy are coming out against you know to two totally different sides it, again like the tournament football there's loads of different variables that you have to navigate and one of them which is way beyond your control is the look of the draw um, and so it's a significant advantage, I think, if you're on the right-hand side as opposed to the left. I think it's also worth mentioning that they'll have an extra 24 hours mm. to recover mm. going into that game because obviously Belgium and Portugal play tomorrow night. Uh, yes, they've played an extra 30 minutes this evening, but I do think an extra 24 hours of recovery could be important too. Mm. Last word then, Damien, on all of this today. Well, obviously, we've seen Denmark progressing, which is an amazing story, but Italy as well. We've probably got, in some ways, maybe we weren't getting, expecting extra time from our second game, but we've definitely had a day of drama. A brilliant drama, yeah, on Denmark. Listen, I studied them closely for two years. People wrote them off after the first game, but without taking into the circumstances. People forget that they went into the ne next game, they should have beaten Belgium, and of course then went and pumped Russia. So trust me, they are a very, very, very good team and they can go far into the tournament. Italy, listen, yes, they've disappointed performance-wise tonight, but again, 
Um, yes, they haven't had the big signature win yet, but they're more than uh, capable of doing it. Yep, they certainly are. All right.